In this video, we're taking a look at Adafruit's Pi Portal. This is a CircuitPython powered display made for IoT projects. It features the Cortex M4 processor, the ESP32 Wi Fi module, and lots more. Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hi, everybody. It's Miss Lady Ada here with Mr. Lady Ada. You're a little more Adafruit. I'm a little more Adafruit. I'm, just, of... I'm just Adafruit. You're just you're Phil like Adafruit. Oh, no, you're Phil Adafruit. Yeah. Uh, and we uh, have an exciting show for you tonight, all sorts of goodies and news and events and giveaways. We can't wait to get into these. These shows lately have been massive, packed with show. all sorts of goodies, and I can't wait to take you to the next hour. We're broadcasting live from the Adafruit headquarters in downtown Manhattan. Behind me is a real factory. We do all the design, testing, manufacturing, shipping of the electronic goodies that you get when you buy from Adafruit. You're wondering, where do they come from? Do they come from some like magical unicorn? No, they come from here, the Adafruit factory. This is where it all happens, the magic, which is actually not very magic. It's actually just a lot of hard work, waking up, doing stuff every day. So uh, let's kick off this show. What's, uh, what are we going to tell them all about tonight? On tonight's show, the code is IoT Design Week because that's coming up and mm. it happens part of next week. So I wanted to give people more of a chance to get 10% off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Everything except for Adabox and gift certificates. Um, we'll talk about what IoT Design Week is uh, in a bit, but just in a short note, um, it's IoT Design Week. It's with Microchip and it's with Adafruit. We're going to be giving away uh, five Pi portals next week. Actually, Microchip is. Do you want free stuff? Yeah. You can so, get it. So right now, this is your good reminder. Not only do you save some money tonight, but you can win something next week. And Free. We'll talk about that later on in the show. Amazing. It supports us, an open source hardware company. Here's a bunch of us when it was warm outside. Oh, um, man, I can't wait. That was a long time ago. Uh. That was last year. Um, when it was warm out. So uh, this is us. It supports us, an uh, independent, loan-free, venture capital-free, open source hardware company, woman-owned, not a lot like it out there. New York-owned. Except for Adafruit. <laughs> So uh, that code helps us. And it helps you. Yeah, we don't have money. we don't have VC or funding or loans. This is, this is it. This is it. Thanks. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing your projects. Lady, it'll go over that. We have some cool Python and hardware. There's so much going on. I'll try to get through it all. I had to even remove some stuff because there's so many things happening. Back the mailbag and uh, stop by. Read your letters to us. Time travel. Look around the world. Makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Help wanted some stuff made from Jobs Board. 3D printing. It's made in New York City. We've got some new products. We'll answer your questions, and we do that over on adfruit.it slash Discord. We've got some top secret. We'll do a trivia question where we give away something, all that, and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Yay! Okay. So, okay. Uh, one programming note. We are corresponding with YouTube. Sometimes when the videos are finished, the live videos, and they go into YouTube, they're unsynced. They so the audio and yeah. the video are not synced up. They fixed a couple, but um, we did a blog post. So if that's happening and you're watching this right now... Um, We're we'll, sorry. We, hasn't, we can't do anything about it. It is. But YouTube knows about it. They're fixing it. They're looking into it. Anyways. It doesn't happen on some devices, so try a different device or a different yeah, web browser. Yeah, devi devices seem to be fine. It's computers. Mobile seems to be okay. Yep. Computers, no. Anyways, um, like I said, we got the code IoT Design Week. 10% um, off. When you... And there's freebies. Yeah, when you check out on our store, we have freebies. What are the freebies, I do? I'd love to tell you about the freebies. $99 or more, you get a free promo code or half size breadboard. It's that thing over there. It's about the same size and shape as a solderless breadboard, but it's solderful. And uh, it looks just like it with the same, you know, lines, uh, you know, the rails, and then the five connecting lines for each uh, row. And so you can transfer your project from a solderless breadboard to the solderful breadboard, sort it up, and now it's a permanent prototype, the Perma Proto. Um, these are super handy. Uh, people can get enough of them. Nobody has ever complained about getting them for free, so that's good. One forty nine or more, you may get one of these lovely enamel pins. No, we do run out of some of the pins. Like we used to have an Adabot pin and then people really liked it and now we don't have any more. So um, right now our selection is you could get a Blinka computer, 
uh, blink at her computer typing away. You can get a Sparky the Blue Smoke Monster or Boomy the Rockin' Out Boombox. Um, one of those will be free for you when you order $149 or more. And if you make an account on Adafruit, you'll get a different one every order. So you should make an account and it'll keep track of it so that way you don't end up getting the same freebie more than once while we're running this promotion. $199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. Uh, that is uh, trackable, high quality shipping in the US, uh, lower 48 states. Uh, we recommend it, we'll talk more about shipping in a moment. Um, and then at uh, 299 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express. It's an all-in-one development board with 10 NeoPixels, uh, motion sensors, infrared, capacitive touch, temperature, light, uh, sound, audio, battery power, USB, whatever you like. Uh, you can program it in like half a dozen different ways from Arduino, CircuitPython, MakeCode, uh, MakeBlocks, Rust, uh, what else did we have? Code.orgs, Discoveries. I don't yeah. know. Other things I can't even think of. Lisp, whatever you want. Uh, all sorts of different programming languages available to um, take your first project or maybe make a project with all the stuff built in. It's a great way to teach and learn electronics. Okay. When you're checking out EPS, is the best way to go for the U.S. Um, if you have some time to spare, Pistol. And if you're international, you want to go with DHL. DHL is the best for international. Through Manhattan, we have same day delivery. Just check out before. 11 a.m. if the zip code is supported in Manhattan, we'll have the information for you to get your delivery same day in New York City. Lady Ada, people around the world show and share the projects every single week. That's right. What was on the show and tell this week? Well, we had a bunch of Adafruit peeps come by with some cool stuff. We are just on a roll. We're just we're just doing so much. Brent um, got a Pi Portal, uh, and so he's working on a weather station using the stem connector on the Pi Portal to connect. Um, like six different sensors on the I squared C bus, and then using the analog input to connect to an anemometer for wind speed and direction. And um, he's uh, um, writing also an Adafruit IO um, uh, wrapper library for the Pi Portal and, and the ESP32 SPI um, to send data to Adafruit IO. So we'll, you'll be able to both display it, the weather data for your local weather station, and also send it off to the internet. Um, check that out and uh, keep your eyes peeled in the learning system for that guide when he finishes and writes it up. Aaron, I uh, published a guide on making your own uh, recycled water bottle um, gem based on the uh, opal and amethyst. Sorry, opal, which is Steven Universe. Yeah, Steven Universe, but I'm trying to remember the case. Is, is opal is made from pearl and amethyst. Yeah. So when you spin it one way, um, the LEDs are an, uh, pearl color, you spin it the other way, do an aphthous color, and then when you shake it, they combine together to make opal, and they have like an opalescent color, and you can make a gem that you can wear. Um, Colin had a piece of quartz. Why? Because there's a new uh, Circuit Playground video out. We're going to be Q? playing that tonight. Q's for quartz. World premiere for a lot of people. World premiere, so hold on tight. Yeah. He had we posted it on YouTube, but some people haven't seen it yet, so you're going to see it tonight. Gather around the kids in a couple minutes, because you're going to see Q's for quartz. Q's for quartz. Um, JP uh, built a Pi Portal countdown to his next workshop, uh, which is tomorrow. Using the Wi-Fi on the Pi Portal, you can uh, get the time, which is actually like really hard to do for my controllers. Um, like without a real-time clock, you can use Wi-Fi to get the time, and that way it's always correct, and it even does like daylight savings adjustment, all that stuff, uh, which is really nice um, because it's hard to do. Even real-time clocks don't usually do daylight savings time adjustments. So this is a countdown device, and also we demoed out the light switch from a couple weeks ago with the um, Feather NR52840. He showed um, how you can, uh, how it works where he uh, switches the light on and off using his phone and it turns the overhead lights on and off. So it's, it's not just for show, it actually does work. Known Pedro, uh, making a whole bunch of Pi Portal cases and stands, um, an enclosed case with a power boost, a desktop stand that doesn't tilt over. Um, the, the box version, I think the guide already went live. It has a switch and everything. So it's a nice little, you know, the power won't last a long time, but maybe a couple hours. But it's good for if you want to make a portable project that's rechargeable. Um, Katni uh, has a really neat shirt that Noah and Pedro made for her. Uh, it's like a Blinka circle, the Oberos, and uh, it's in sparkly purple, which I think um, the world eater would appreciate. And then uh, she also made a button board using a button demo. So you get three by four, 12 buttons. 
and the color of the button is the color of the NeoPixels that you want set. So when you press the button, it will turn the attached NeoPixel strip that color. It's a really simple demo, but she was able to get it going in only a couple minutes. And uh, it's, it's really easy to do with the touch screen and um, this button code that she's written. And she's going to write that up for a guide. So stay tuned. Then we had some visitors from around the community. Danon came by. Uh, he's at work and he can't he listen on earbuds at work to music, but he can have his phone play music using the speaker. But that takes more power. So he's crafting his own battery pack by like recycling a whole bunch of stuff he's got in his bin. Uh, he's got this gigantic battery. He's going to 3D print a case and it snaps onto the back of his phone to make like an ultra huge battery that'll last like forever. It's it twice as big now. But that's okay because he's just want, it's basically like a little portable stereo system. Um, so that looks really fun. And then Elizabeth came by with two projects. She made a St. Patrick's Day headband with a Circuit Playground Express and a servo. I think it moves the little um, clovers back and forth. And she made a happy birthday card that when you open it, um, the Circuit Playground um, lights up all the LEDs. And then when you press the button, it tells the person getting the card to press the button, it sings happy birthday to you, which is a really impressive project. And I'm sure the person who's gonna get this birthday card will um, remember this as the best birthday ever, thanks to Elizabeth yep. and her craftiness. And that's who was on the show and tell. Okay. All participants on the show and tell get as seen on the show and tell sticker. Just email us at supportedadafruit.com. Don't forget that we do the show and tell every single week, 7.30 p.m. We have blog posts, put this on Discord. You can see it on YouTube and more. Um, we've been doing a series of videos for a while. We came out with a coloring book for free. You can or you can purchase it, but we have a free download called um, A through Z of Electronics. A was from Ampere. Yeah. That's so long Lady ago. Is, e is for Electronics, and it's A through Z of Electronics. And, and so that was a script. That was a script. script. So there's, there's, a, there's a coloring book. Yeah. And then we use that for the videos, and we were up to Q. Q. Q is for Quartz. We're, we're, we're well past halfway through. Yeah. We're getting close to the completion of the series and uh, world premiere for some of you. Here is Take Q. Take it away. Is for courts. It's about friends. Sandstone, obsidian, pyrite. Hey, the bot. What you up to? Oh, I was just going through my rock collection. I forgot I had so many. Mm, find anything good? Sure. Some precious stones. This one's my favorite. It's quartz. That quartz does look special. Where did you get it? There was a rock show at the museum. I thought there would be more guitar solos, but it turned out to be a bunch of people trading minerals. So I got this quartz because it looks really neat. It looks neat because it is neat. We use quartz and electronics all the time. Did someone say time? Wow. Oh, why, yes. I was just explaining to Adabot how quartz is used in electronics. Excellent. Adabot, do you know why I am the world's greatest integrated circuit? No, Hans. Why are you the world's greatest? Timing. It's oh. what I take care of in the circuit. And do you know why my timing is so impeccable? No, why is your timing so in- Quartz! And why does quartz create perfect timing? Um, are you gonna keep interrupting me? Oh, settle down, Hans. I can explain why quartz is so important for timing. Why, thank you. You see, certain materials, such as quartz crystals, are piezoelectric. Simply put, this means if you apply a small amount of mechanical force to a piece of quartz, it will generate a small electrical voltage. Whoa, that sounds pretty unusual. So, if I crush quartz, would it shock me? Well, you, you have to squeeze it very lightly and, and just right, and the electrical voltage is very, very small, but yes, I, I suppose you're right. And the opposite is also true. If you apply voltage to a piece of quartz, it will respond with a precise mechanical vibration. Whoa, quartz sounds like magic. It's not magic, Adabot, it's science. Take a look inside this quartz watch, for instance. This little integrated circuit here passes electrical current to the quartz crystal. 
Then the quartz vibrates at precisely 32,768 times per second. The IC detects the vibrations, counts them one by one, and when it gets all 32,768, it knows one second has passed. So there's a quartz crystal inside of that little metal container? Yeah, and it looks something like this. Hey, that looks like a tuning fork. That's true, it does look like a tuning fork. Musicians use tuning forks to tune their instruments. And circuits use quartz to tune their timing. You're right! Very true, Adapart. Quartz is an important reference for the timing of so many circuits. Microcontrollers, computers, and more. I always wondered what was in those little metal cans. And now, I know. Well, it's about time. Adabot, I believe Minerva just made a time joke. Is that what that was? hey <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right. Amazing. And uh, we also have our live shows coming up. Um, before we get onto that, Colin, excellent work. Andrew, Brennan, Jelly, Barney, the entire team who work on these every it's a single team time. Team effort. Yes. Um, onto our live shows. JP will be broadcasting tomorrow, and here are some of the things he has shown and some of the things he will show. Mm -hmm. some make code. So if you go to makewithcn.com, you will see you can do stuff with all the cool Cartoon Network friends, characters, and more on makecode.adafruit.com. JP does a Make Code Minute every single week. Take it away, JP. What's the Make Code Minute? Oh, it's actually a little bit less than two minutes this week. Yeah. Hmm. In Make Code Arcade, I want to talk about projectiles, as well as an effect that's called the star field. So projectiles are another type of sprite. So in this example, I have my Adabot sprite, which I've created as a player. And then I'm also creating, down here in this button A pressed block, a set projectile to, it is projecting from my sprite, which is Adabot, and I've set a vector for this, so it's traveling at essentially up. In this case, up is negative 100, and it's not going anywhere on X. So whenever I press this button, I'm going to send a projectile out of Adabot in the up direction. And then you can see, playing over here, I've got uh, this star field effect, which just gives us that feeling of traveling through space. And I've set my controls so that I can only move Adabot left and right and constrained to the screen. So now when I press the A button, which you can also use the space bar, I'm going to send one of my little sprites shooting out of Adabot's head. So you can imagine uh, this might be the precursor to a sort of uh, space invaders or centipedes type of game. Or you may just want to use it to send love out into the universe birthed from Adabot's robot head. And that is how you use projectiles in Make Code Arcade.
and that's Make Code Minute featuring a lot of cool stuff with Arcade, which is Make Code's new gaming effort. Mm -hmm. You'll be seeing and hearing a lot of more uh, stuff from us, including some hardware, very soon. This is good to like get your ideas going, yep. and you can use Easiest a simulator, and then games. Maybe there'll be some hardware. All right, uh, let's do this. I'm ready to do this. Okay. There is a lot of things going on in the world of Python and hardware. I can't wait. PyCon is coming up. It is May 1st to 9th. Ooh, that's soon. Yep, the schedule was just posted. Um, also, we announced and word got out, DigiKey and Adafruit are teaming up to get Python on hardware to as many people as possible. There will be about 4,000 of special edition Adafruit Circuit Playground Express boards running, as you guessed it, CircuitPython. Yay! The team will be there. Dan, Katney, and Scott, as well as Mick and Melissa, also Brent, and they'll be doing uh, an open session, they'll be doing some workshops, there'll be lots of stuff going on and more, so this is a big effort, and if you're thinking of going to PyCon, this is just one more reason, and also on the social medias and in discords, thank DigiKey, they made this happen, thank you so much, DigiKey, Yay. we very much appreciate it. Um, other news in the community, um, we got up to 300 folks in GitHub, uh, oh, sorry, in, uh, in GitHub's the next You're one. More this, than is, a thousand on this, this is Reddit. Um, we helped some folks over the weekend on um, their Pi portal. So uh, we're in Reddit, out. out there. Um, and then for GitHub, which I was mentioning before, 1,000 thanks. Thanks for um, adding a star on our repo. It lets us know we're doing a pretty good job. Um, Dan posted this up. This is on the blog. Adam is a popular multi-platform text editor with excellent Python support, and it's great to use with CircuitPython. But out of the box, it might not edit the files on a circuit Pi drive, and that's what shows up as a USB drive, because it doesn't force all the data in a file to be written out immediately. Now there is a fix. It is uh, better. It is now safe, and it is um, working. Yeah, so. it's called F-Sync on save. It's a yeah. good idea. And honestly, like, yeah, I would just install it. I use it all the time. Yep. It doesn't make editing slow or anything. It just means you always write out all the data every time. OK, um, while back. Microchip has a cool digital magazine, and I think it's a print magazine too, in Design Quarter, and we did an article with them, Python on microcontrollers, and this was last year. And then this year is the IoT Design Week, and we'll be giving away the Pi Portals, and I'm gonna be spending a lot of time on that in just a moment, but this is the first mention of it, I'm gonna go into more details later. Hackspace Magazine, um, Circuit Python snaked its way onto that. Um, Sophie has some amazing articles. This is Circuit Python such a cool helmet. on a cosplay helmet. Yeah, and she showed that off on the show and tell two weeks ago. Yeah, and uh, this was kind of neat. You normally don't see reviews of soil sensors, but ours got a 9 out of 10 nice. in Hackspace Magazine, and this is a Circuit Python powered soil sensor. Yep, it's capacitive, so it doesn't oxidize. It uses I2C because you can use it with a Raspberry Pi or Arduino or anything. I designed it because I was you were you kept asking me how come there's no good soil sensors and I was like I don't know I don't know and you're yeah. like well why don't you design one I'm like ah. and then eventually I was like I can't take it anymore I designed it nine out of ten next up uh, they reviewed the Grand Central it also got a nine out of ten and this is the Circuit Python powered monster um, and there's some in stock and there's some in stock a couple left yeah. okay we're making more we're other Circuit Python news um, this is a um, it's a cool story it's also you know it's a puppy so it's a little sad. Um, this is Lucy. This is a seven-year-old Border Collie, and um, the, the dog is going blind, and so there's no cure. So Bud, the owner, purchased a halo. It's a metal hoop that surrounds her head, um, so if she gets too close to an object, the halo will collide um, with that instead of her head. Um, but uh, the, the thing that has to happen is how do you get notified, how do you, you know, noise, and there's lots of different things. So um, he started to build something using Circuit Python. so check it out. All right, Circuit yeah. Python for dogs. Yeah. Um, then this is kind of neat. This is uh, this is one of those timers. It's the Pomodoro timer. Yeah, that um, it lets you know you know when you're like it's like time not to work. Yeah, but you're supposed to work for you know 15 minute chunks. I think this is sped up, and then you can take a five minute break, and so it kind of keeps yeah. you from. For some people, it helps them from like burning out because they get to take breaks often, and you're forced to take a break, and so you just pull your break time into that like one dedicated zone. Um, Pi portals have made it out into the world and this is from the Monroe CIC Center. I believe this is IBM Center and uh, Ron made this to figure out how many people have I think visited or attended that they hit their forecast and they were up to 96 percent so that's kind of So it's kind of interesting they, you know it's very easy with Pi portal you just change the image and then you can just have JSON data from somewhere on the internet and you can display it and in this case it's 96 percent and it's got these beautiful fonts that Scott and, and Katni and Dan worked on to get into Pi portal. Um, so you can display it in any font size you want and uh, any color. 
another project. This is Twitter followers. Uh, this is Dave's alarm clock, and I'll play uh, a little video. This is what uh, it looks like when it's in use. It brews coffee as well. It does yeah, weather. Yeah, it's some IoT coffee thing. And it also has uh, an alarm once you set it, and it'll uh, tell you when. To get up? Yeah. I don't know, and when to, and when this to... is the Elkar's interface theme, yeah. and so it will have a very cool Star trek -y yeah, it gets the weather. So it kind of takes yeah. all of our demos and combines it gets time, weather, <laughs> yeah. alarm, so I'm gonna show coffee brewing. Yeah, so you can see the letters you said. Yeah, and you can, you can use gestures so to change the time you drag yeah. time. So there it goes. Very interesting. And then it's the alarm. Yeah. All right, uh, make a real figure figured out that, yep, the latest CircuitPython beta, you can show a terminal even on the Halloween. We also have a cool hackster demo. We published the Bitcoin uh, example, so this is their Bitcoin net worth. It'll calculate, yeah, how much your Bitcoin's worth. Um, then we have the weather demo. Uh, we started playing around with this idea well, maybe we can bring HyperCard, HyperCard back to uh, you know the hands of everyday people now who uh, maybe necessarily haven't seen HyperCard. So we have Button going. Start with buttons, yeah. Chicago font. Look at that, nice. And then uh, we showed a preview. Um, we're going to show this in, maybe it's, it's not out yet. This is uh, Circuit Python on a flexible ink. It's and very then, interesting. Yeah. And then Game of Thrones is coming out. So we have a IOT, a GOT IOT. Yeah. And this is uh, Game of Thrones. And uh, Freak out. Yeah. And this is the Pi Portal. Um, I think it was, uh, this is the first time I was testing it. So I didn't even know if it was going to work. It only took a couple minutes. Got the time, put in the date when the next Game of Thrones is going to... I did a special build for you where it's yeah. rotated, because you were like, I want it to be... Because all the images they released were for phones, so they're uh, portrait, not uh, landscape. But then yeah. it sings the Game of Thrones song. <laughs> That's right. In, I think, chiptune, you find a chiptune version. That's right. And then you just have to think of stuff and you find it on the internet. No, I know, and like I actually found we found a font and everything, so yeah. we, could, we could display the time and. So this was a little while ago, so it's less than forty-four days, so you can see what. Yeah. Um, we got our little uh, new product display going. This is how many Ada boxes we're left at Ada box display. There's a lot less than that now. We showed off this uh, keyboard uh, to UART. Mm-hmm. No and Pedro have an upcoming project. This was kind of a, a secret project. This is a uh, Internet of Things Viewmaster. So imagine being able to pull down images off the internet in uh, Viewmaster style. So we'll have that soon. Uh, we had some help wanted. This is uh, something that's happening a lot now. People are looking for people with Circuit Python skills. Mm. So um, that's kind of neat. People are saying they have Circuit Python skills, and then they're saying that they want people with Circuit Python skills. So that's kind of neat. Uh, this is from Grogard. And this is kind of neat. This is from uh, Giant Board, and this was monitoring one Giant Board power consumption with another, and then uploading it for Adafruit IO. So it's kind of neat. Are they using our INA Featherwing? Yeah. So they're using our INA two one nine Featherwing, which is designed for power monitoring. And then yeah, you can just use it to power monitor anything. GoGuard is adding Wi-Fi to the Giant Board Linux Feather. This is kind of a cool rendering, and then uh, Cedar Grove is always busy. This is an EREC module that. Uh, Compans CV signals. Companders. Yeah, the CV input is amplified or attenuated and limited to a quantized output range. So this is using uh, an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy M4 Express. Um, and other news. Man, you know you're really into analog synthesizers when you're like doing companders. Yeah. Circuit Python snakes its way to the SAM32. Um, this it's is a another SAMD, board. It's a SAMD51 yeah. plus an ESP32. It's not hooked up the same way the Pi Portal is, a little bit different, yeah. um, but it also has a micro SD card. I like this board, look, it's got yeah. everything on it, and it's feather shaped. Cool. Nice work. And this is a cool uh, project. This is uh, a USB host coprocessor, it uses CircuitPython, MicroPython. And this totally inspired me. I was like, oh my God, I, this is a good idea. We should make that, so I made yep. that. <laughs> and next up, this is for um, folks that want to do games. Uh, it's an online Python editor for Paquito. Uh, it's a free tool that enables you to write and test MicroPython programs and uh, create the binary and uh, test it right there. There's more um, 
Python and MicroPython and CircuitPython on calculators, making the rounds. Also, uh, little uh, little VGL is a high-level GUI library. It's implemented C. Its API is in C, and it works with MicroPython. So I'm really interested in implementing this for Arduino for our data for GFX library. So that'll be that'll be interesting. That'll be cool. Okay. If you're interested in uh, getting an IoT on the blockchain using Python and ESP8266, yes, you can do all those buzzwords. Um, I've been following this. Keith has been working on this um, a Python. It's a very, very tiny version of Python that runs on like AVR or, or Uno. Like Eight bit, yeah. Yeah. It is minimal. So it's minimal, minimal, minimal. So this is really neat. And I think it was because he was teaching kids uh, Lego stuff for somebody. He's like, I want to get Python to run on in, in AVR. So it's like, wow. All right. Um, BeagleBone has a BeagleBone AI. We're going to see if Blinker runs on this. Uh, this is a cool Python on hardware project that is uh, basically a free open source version of um, Stream Deck. So, yeah, you can leave your own yeah. Python API with, with direct USB so you yep. don't have to use their software. This is uh, Hack My House, an article from Hackaday. It's uh, using Raspberry Pi as a touchscreen thermostat. Um, this is the latest version of um, Platform I.O. and it supports Adafruit's NRF52 boards. Oh, great. Yep. Then there's the latest version of um, Visual Studio, the February 2019 release. Um, there's updates for Python. Check that out. Um, reminder of some events coming up. KaiCon 2019, we're a sponsor. There is the um, MicroPython meetup in London, and Nicholas Toll's going to be there. And he's going to be talking about Moo and CircuitPython. Um, all this stuff is in our GitHub repository. Wait, who's that, on the, who's that on the left there? Maybe you'll find out later. Oh. Um, we have all of the libraries. We're still asking for folks to help with the messages in different human languages. Translate, translate, translate. Even We're if Discord, you're not a technical person, you can help. All the time. Um, 10,000 people plus in the Discord community. It's all part of our Code Plus community with Python. If you missed any of these things, don't worry, you can eat your own tail. Um, no, it's on awesome-circuit-python. Uh, if you search for it, it's on GitHub. It's our awesome list. We update it all the time. And that is all the Python and hardware news that I could fit in this Whew. this week. i got to keep moving, though. Well, yeah, let's go. But that was amazing. Good That's work. a lot of stuff. You did a lot. There was a lot. I'm impressed. Well, everyone did a lot. I, I just work here. No, um, but you did a good job of saying all of it. Ten minutes straight. Okay, pack the mailbag. These are the emails that people sent us. We read these to our all company meeting called State of the Fruit, and it says, Colin makes very good, awesome instructional videos. Your piece on the history of batteries was great learning, a module that lends itself to easy classroom replication, perfectly balanced with boards and pictures without drudgery of written chemistry formulas that would go over the head of my primary and secondary school students, also lends itself to good home study and kitchen science. Granted, some specialized shopping for materials required, but that is the uh, price of true science. Most excellent, keep up the good work. That video is epic, by the way. Yep. Check out, if you haven't checked out Colin's battery video, um, I remember we did it together. It was super fun, and there's a drone that hits me in the head. Okay. Time travel. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff going on this week and some news. Um, first up, happy birthday, Sinclair. Ooh. The ZX81, a British home computer, is launched by Sinclair Research. So... Um, this is a home computer produced by Sinclair Research and manufactured in Dundee, Scotland by Timex Corporation. It's got a lot of people started. This was a very early, yeah, seminal computing. It's a home computer that was affordable. People could write their own games. They could have software. I mean, it was. It came before the... It was about the same time as the Apple II? Or maybe a little bit before? It was uh, the British version. I'd about have, the same time. I'd have to look on a computer for yeah, the exact know. dates. I know. You have to look up on your Sinclair <laughs> Timex. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is uh, what we were talking about earlier. IoT Design Week is coming up March 11th, March 15th. Um, watch our site. Look for the broadcasts that are going to be happening. Um, we will be giving away five of these. Actually, Microchip will. And all you need to do is tune in to their live broadcast that they're going to be doing and you, yes, you, could probably win one of these. Since we don't have a ton of them in stock, this is a good deal. It's free. It is free. And so you'll want to be around um, March 12th at 9 a.m. Pacific time or noon Eastern time. You have to register on their site and join in the chat. Well, no, I think you can just go to YouTube, but you should sign up at any time. Read the blog yeah. post. 
And you should sign up anytime because there's other prizes that aren't for it, but you don't want to win those. You want to win these. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But still, you could win both parts. Maybe. Yeah, you can win them all. Go register. And get ready. You could look at our previous article that we did with Microchip about Python and microcontrollers. This will all be for Internet uh, of Things Design Week. But, yeah, you can win these. And mark on your calendar, uh, March 12th, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Um, Microchip will be giving away five of these. And... Uh, like Lady just said, you can also register. Uh, there's all links on the blog, and you can register to win other prizes, too. So, yay. We'll be celebrating that. Free stuff. Okay. Uh, help Wanted. Um, yep. We have some other things on the job board this week. So, jobs.adafruit.com. You can be a company and find cool people, or you can be someone who just posts their skills. Creative Code Specialist Technician in the London College of Communication, that Circuit Python one that we mentioned earlier, and the Senior Software Engineer at Space 150. Dude, there's Many jobs, 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 and these are fun jobs, doing yeah. fun stuff. Often not classified, and uh, you can make creative art or, you know, make help people with their projects or products. Um, we've got like easily 50 jobs up on the jobs board. Oh, yeah, there's so there's so many options for people out there who want to freelance or maybe change jobs or whatever. Okay, um, open source hardware. Um, one question that came in not too long ago is why is there a couple different open source logos? I'm so glad you asked. Good question, and this is for an entire show one day later. But there was a gear logo that the community worked on, and then Oshawa, which is Open Source Hardware Association, now have a logo. And this is all part of an entire menagerie of logos that started a long time ago. Um, I have a weird history with this. The logo on the far, uh, when you're looking at your screen, left, flash enabled, that was my logo a long time ago. This is 1999. OSI made this keyhole logo, and then you can see the entire group of logos, and then eventually the open source hardware logo, and these are all variants. I love the open source that. radio, it turns into the radio. But yeah, my, I like the chess piece one. What is it, open source chess? Yeah, there's open source chess. Oh, that's cool. Anyways, these are all the different logos. Um, so that's why there's different logos. Um, before we get into the tutorials, um, Mike is doing an excellent job with the um, feather. Awesome. Awesome feather. This, awesome yeah. feather. So um, we have a little video. <laughs> So check it out at um, awesome-feather, it's on GitHub, and you can see all the feather boards, all the feather accessories, all the feather um, compatibles, and, and feather you, cases. if you have feather stuff that you've designed, we'd love to feature it. Send a pull request or open up an issue with links to your feather that you've designed, your feather wing or accessory or whatnot. It's an open standard, we want everyone to use it. Okay. On the big board, we have um, a bunch of tutorials, like 1700 of them. Um, what's on the board this week? Okay, um, got a bunch of PyPortal projects. We've got a uh, triple pack from JP. Um, very similar code, but you know, spin it three different ways. You can have a Twitter follower trophy, a GitHub stars trophy, or a Reddit stats trophy. So this is, um, your, you know, if you have a PyPortal, we basically, it, these are the introductory projects you'd want to use. Um, how to get data from a JSON stream, and then there's three options here, as you can see, Twitter, um, GitHub or Reddit, how to get data from their APIs and extract the number of information you want and then display it using a Pi Portal with a nice background. So the background stays the same, but then the number changes, so it, it you know updates. And then when you have a new follower or subscriber, it makes a sound. So um, if you've just picked up a Pi Portal, start with these. These are really good guides um, that will just get you started with getting the Wi-Fi going. You don't need API keys for these three projects, so that's another nice thing. Like they're all using freely open. Um, APIs. We also have, if you're ready for a more advanced project, um, a PyPortal data logger. Um, we're trying to get more CircuitPython Adafruit.io projects going, so using the PyPortal as a base for that. This one um, uses the terminal to display uh, status and temperature, and then um, uploads light level and temperature using Adafruit.io to the cloud. Um, for that, you do need to have an Adafruit.io account, but that's free. And then you can use this as a temperature monitor that also um, uploads data to Adafruit.io for later analysis and um, uh, plotting. Um, we also have from Archie uh, this really cute circuit Playground Express rocket lamp, um, which is, you know, it's, a, it's like a crafted lamp and it has NeoPixels at the bottom that um, uh, flicker like a flame and then like the rocket shoots off. So it's a lamp that has a little bit more interactivity to it. Um, we also have 
uh, the Cricut Exhibit Demo Board. So this is a project that you thought would be a good idea. We saw somebody make like a demo board for some robotic components. We're like, oh, that's a really good idea. We should have a demo board that shows all, you know, for students is really handy. Um, all the inputs and outputs that you have on a Cricut, but they affect each other. So the potentiometer, you know, that's an input. When you twist that, it changes the servo. And then there's um, capacitive touch. When you touch that, it turns the LED neopixels on. Um, there's, um, you know, a button, and when you press the arcade button, it makes the solenoid go. And then when the light sensor is, is bright or dim, um, the motor spins faster or slower. So it's an all-in-one de demonstration board for all the different things that a Cricut can do. And we have a little video. Do you want to show the little yeah, video? Yeah, I like to do that with code. And then I like to have something that does it all. And then all the individual ones that are very simple. And then, and then I like the physical thing that people can see. Yeah, let's show them the little yeah. demo video because it's so cool. Yeah, that's nice. So everything that's great for students to, to learn about interactivity and all the different things that you can do so you can start planning out your project. We've got the Pi Portal case. We'll show that video shortly. That's from Known Pedro. And we've got the Steven Universe wearable fusible gem from Aaron. We'll also show that video shortly. Yeah. All right. That's I'm just going to show the first part of the Steven Universe one. Yeah. And then we'll show the Pi Portal case during yeah. the 3D Hangouts. Okay. So here's a little snippet of the Steven Universe video. Make a wearable fusion gem in the colors of your favorite Steven Universe characters. Use MakeCode's drag and drop editor to create the code. Choose the colors you like best. I chose purple for amethyst and yellow for pearl. Tilt the circuit playground left or right to choose colors. Add some code that fuses the two gems into opal when you shake the circuit playground. All right. All righty. So want to finish that project? Watch the video, check out the guy. Yep, just got posted. It's cool because it uses a hot glue and a recycled Aquafina bottle. That's right. Okay, um, some Adafruit IO news. Tomorrow is the big day. We will be releasing the latest IoT series that we did with DigiKey, and tomorrow is Adafruit IO. Yes, in in not on purpose for IoT Design Week, but it's a really good coincidence. It, we've planned it all. Okay, we've planned we're, it all. We are time. We're just trapped in this. We're just we're, trapped in time. We're like amber, like yeah. a Steven Universe gem. Yeah. So check um, out that video. It's like 40 minutes long. Yeah. And it's I, all about how to use Adafruit IO. It's everything about Adafruit IO. Yeah, like I have I a 40 second trailer. All of it. So here we go. Tomorrow it'll probably release at 2 p.m. Um, we spent a lot of time on these. Yeah. Um, and we looked around. Ain't nobody doing IoT videos because it's a really complicated subject. And, and no I can keep it interesting and funny. No one can talk yeah. about it, show it. No one has real live examples. No one has something you can use without paying for it. Yeah. So anyways, here's a little trailer. Okay. service that proved easy to understand and implement. Maybe one with high quality documentation, with examples, learning guides, and community support. And maybe, just maybe, an IoT service that provides open source solutions with a low to no cost point of entry. Well, on today's episode, I'm happy to do a formal introduction to just that, our very own Adafruit IO. Okay, so you'll see that tomorrow. And then don't forget, um, not only is it Code IoT Design Week, but next week is IoT Design Week. And so go there is the giveaway that Microsoft's gonna do. Um, okay, so um, one reminder, I'm gonna be posting some like previews. A lot of you probably know what might be in Adabox 11, but we only have a few slots left. If you've been sitting on the fence, um, I'm gonna have our little pie portal. I think we have only 80 more people we can get for Adabox. 11. And last week was 130, so that's yeah. how fast it's going. It goes fast. Yeah, so about 80, 80 people. Um, I'm in New York City. Uh, big news for us as a company. 
Uh, yay, four million boards were made on a pick and place. Yeah. Worked Ooh. array. And that's not including the previous pick and place. And of course, there's two. This is the older one. But yeah, we, I think, about do was about almost a million a year. And this is when we just had one pick and place. That is a pick and place. Vance and Michelle. Vance and Michelle, rocking and our lady out. Ada. This is real. This is, um, this is me, Lamore Ada Fruit. Yeah, this is actually what we. And that's what, what we Vance and Oven and Michelle yeah. Stensler. Yep. No, I don't know. All right, so uh, more factory footage. Uh, let's have our, uh, our factory take it away. Okay. And it wouldn't be Main New York City factory footage segment without a view of what the picking places wake up to or fall asleep to every single day and night here at Ada Fruit. Nice sunset. Oh, oh, that's going on. So cute. Okay, 3D printing. Uh, we got two things. We'll play them back to back. One is the um, Pi Portal case, and then next is a cool accessory you can 3D print for a Tesla. Ooh. In this project, we're building a portable touchscreen device using Adafruit's Pi Portal. We designed a case to fit all the electronics so you can make a portable IoT project. Use Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and demo code to get started. The Open Weather Map API can be used to create a custom weather station. Check out the Learn Guide for documentation and CAD files. The enclosure features snap fit covers and a bracket for securing all the components. Get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. Secure the PCBs to the 3D printed case with machine screws. The back cover snap fits and features a spot for a bigger speaker. There's also a nice cutout for the microSD card slot. You can use a toggle switch to power the device on and off. You can also recharge the LiPo battery over USB. The face plates can be swapped out so you can build a custom keypad. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Okie dokie 3D Hangouts every Wednesday with Noah and Pedro. Don't forget to
to watch that. You can learn how to make all this stuff and more. Uh, we're going to be doing new products in just a moment. Ooh. But you probably want to know the code, IoT Design Week. Tips and off. Yep. Everything but show. Okay. All right. Our first new product is coming soon. And you want to talk about this? I do. Um, PCBs came in and they didn't come out quite right, so I'm going to get them redone. But meanwhile, you can gaze upon and subscribe to the analog devices plus educate temperature and motion wing featuring the ADT7410 and ADXL343. Some nice sensors from uh, analog devices, uh, sold through Digikey, of course. But uh, we suck up on a wing, and uh, probably good if you're doing any IoT projects or you just want to measure. Uh, motion and temperature for some sensor ana analysis or data logging. Um, I know people wanted a sensor feather wing. So this is our first one that'll just be like a sensor on a feather wing. Uh, sign up, and when the PCBs come in correctly, we will make them. Okay. I like Next that. Next up. Uh, we got some bolts. Let's skip, skip to the bolts. These are all the things you can do with the bolts. Yeah. <laughs> and then these but, are the bolts. Um, but see how exciting that was? It's actually this. It's actually both. So you get uh, six machine screws, I think M3, and then uh, six hex nuts. Why? Um, some people want to attach things to a circuit playground or a Gemma or a micro bit or a flora, and you don't want to solder to them and you don't use alligator clips. You can always use alligator clips, but then eventually you're like, it's kind of bulky. So let's go to the overhead and I can show this off. So normally, you know, you can, you can attach um, by uh, soldering or clipping on. But this is like really bulky, and like let's say you have a bunch of uh, NeoPixels or something, or, or whatever you, you have that has wires um, attached to it, and you want to connect it uh, to your circuit playground. Well, you can just put the bolt in through, and then uh, you screw it on, and then you see there's a little bit of space. You take the wire, and you can uh, hook it around like this, and then take a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, attach it, and now uh, your NeoPixels are lovely and glowing, and they're um, solidly connected, but without any soldering. I mean, you have to be a little careful to make sure that the wires don't um, split off and, and touch two pads by accident, but uh, besides that, they're you know quite easy to use, and it's a low-cost way to attach. Um, here it's a uh, Circuit Playground Express, but we'll work with anything that has these large holes in them, so our Flora, and our Gemma will work as well, as well as a micro bit. So you can use this for anything. It's just handy, comes in a little packet, ready to go. You get these, so you can do stuff like this. Yeah. Okay, next up, go around like this. Yeah, so we have another addition in the um, flexible neon strips that we've had for a bit, people really like them. This time it's in purple. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's a 12 volt LED strip just like this, you can see it. It's kind of like rectangular, and then it's edge lit with this kind of uh, round, soft um, elastomer silicone uh, covering. You can cut it if you like, although you have to be careful to cut. You know, if you cut it, like it's hard to solder to the cut side, so just you can make it shorter. But you'd have to dig around inside to solder to the um, connection pads if you want to make uh, more than one solder point. And uh, it's it's got this nice neon like glow. It's bright like neon. It's diffused like neon, but it isn't high voltage and isn't expensive, and of course you can bend it however you like. So I've got some here. I can show on the overhead as well. So yeah, it comes, this is actually where the LED strip is, and it's at it's uh, right angle um, LEDs, and you can see the little cut points here if you, if you do want to cut them. But it's a nice diffuse color. I mean, here it's so bright you can't see it's purple that well, but it's, it's a nice diffuse uh, color that come in one meter. We have a bunch of different colors. We have some uh, projects as well. You'll need a transistor to use these, and you know you can't address them, so it's all on or all on off. Uh, but you can PWM them to make them dimmer. Okay. Now in purple. Next up. From Pimeroni, we just got these in, so we rushed to get them in the store. This is the Kibo kit. Okay, keyboard rainbow, I guess is what the Kibo stands for. Um, not the person who would appear on Usenet, if you said their name. And this is a add-on kit for Raspberry Pi. It actually comes with a Pi Zero W, which I didn't realize. So it's actually a pretty good deal because you get the computer in it. And you program it with this special firmware and then it becomes a, a USB controlled uh, keypad. You can, I think, use it just with normal Raspbian, but I think if you use the operating system, it boots up really fast and you can program the keys. So the way it works is um, these are snap 
fit in keys actually they're they're not soldered in and these are the soft touch so they're they're linear they don't click i mean they you, you definitely know that you you press them and they make a clicking sound but they don't have a clicking feel which i think is kind of nice if people really like this one um well maybe we get the clicky version and each one underneath it has a uh, dot star led apa 102 um, that shines through it and it kind of diffuses um through the led here it, it it's quite bright, but um, from an angle, it diffuses nicely. And um, it comes as a multi-layer board, fully assembled, there's no soldering involved. And then you can uh, program each of these keys to do something. The software that Pimeroni has written, you could have it uh, launch code or send, um, uh, you know, send commands to your computer, like hotkey commands that can um, type in text that you don't want to type multiple times or shortcuts or uh, you know, if you're if you're doing camera control, it can change cameras or whatever you want to use. It's basically an open source type of a, a stream deck, launch deck controller. Um, it's a little bit kit. It's almost complete. Uh, you do need an SD card. That's the only thing you need. But other than that, it's uh, it's pretty easy to get going. Um, you put it together. Again, no soldering required, and it has these really cool clear keycaps. Maybe I can remove one carefully. I'm sure people want to see what it's like. So this is underneath. It's a, it's not a Cherry MX. It's a Cherry MX clone. Um, but I think they did that because um, for this use case, you don't need to have the really expensive key switches. It has the same feeling, um, but for a good price. And like really sweet looking silkscreen relief there, with the gold um, exposed mask. So okay. that's the Kibo. And the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Adafruit. And the community is... Do you pay your extender bonnet? This is an easy bonnet, but um, I think really handy. A lot of people, they have a Raspberry Pi, especially once you start adding hats or add-ons, you run out of pins and you're like, hey, you know, I want to control a lot of LEDs, a lot of buttons. How do I do that, you know, we easily? So we made this um, bonnet. It has an MCP23017 um, 16 output expander. So you get 16 GPIO. Each one of those can control an LED or read a button. Can't do PWM. But it can do digital output, high or low, and it can do digital input, and it can have pull-up resistors as well, which is kind of nice. So for switches, you don't need an extra resistor. It's all controlled over I2C. We have a wonderful library that's really easy to use. There's also uh, two interrupt outputs. If you'd like to use the interrupts, if you have a lot of buttons and you don't want to have to constantly query the chip, you know, which button is pressed, you can use the interrupt. It'll tell you, hey, one of the buttons was pressed, and now you can ask me which one, which is usually much faster than, than uh, constant polling. Another thing I did is... Um, because I have a level shifting I2C circuitry on here, the chip is actually using five volt logic. And that means that you can use it to drive uh, blue, white, or green LEDs that usually want higher voltages than 3.3 volts. So you can use it to drive LEDs or buttons. And then the I2C is still 3.3 volts safe for the Raspberry Pi, um, but you can interface with five volt uh, chips and LEDs and devices, which is very handy. If you don't want that, you can cut the trace and put it into 3.3 volt mode. And um, then I have a quick demo. Um, you don't have to solder in these 2x8 uh, connectors, but if you do, you can use um, IDC cables. So, like, we don't have these in the store quite yet, but this is an IDC cable um, this out of the way, that you can plug in, and now, you know, you have the outputs farther away. Um, there's two ports, one for the uh, first eight pins, the A port, and then one for the other eight pins, the B port. And each one of these has a matching ground pin, which is great because you can just connect up an LED or switch directly you know, to the ground and then have the digital output be the, either the sensor input with the pull-up or you can just use it to power the LED. Um, or you don't need to solder these in, you could just have a slim version. And uh, the demo, which is hopefully still running, is um, it has one pin connected uh, with a pull-up and then one pin connected as an output. Oh, great, so it works. When I press it, the Python code um, reads that the switch has been pressed, These, the GPIO went low, and lights up the LED. Very simple, but it's um, in a circuit Python compatibility mode. So like, you could actually use this to then control other devices that need GPIO. So for example, use this and you can use it to control like an LCD if you like, or if you have something else that needs uh, GPIO bit banging. So very handy, uh, low cost, easy use, just pop it right on. Um, to your Raspberry Pi. It works with any Pi with a 2x20 connector. It's a Pi 0, 3, 2, A plus, B, everything but the very first uh, Raspberry Pis. Alrighty, and with that is 
Thanks, everybody. New, 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 new recap time. Recap. Okay. Coming soon, the ADI Featherwing from Analog Devices and DigiKey has an ADXL 343 XXL accelerometer and a Precision ADT7410 temperature sensor. Coming soon, sign up for your own Featherwing. This bolt-on kit lets you easily attach wires to your circuit playground, Express, Gemma, Flora, or Microbit. Without soldering that alligator clips, you just wrap the wire around this screw and uh, torque it down. Um, we now have these uh, 9 to 12 volt uh, neon-like LED flex strips in purple. Uh, it's really easy, just give it power. It's basically just one gigantic LED and you've got this really beautiful, smooth, purple neon flex strip. The Kibo from uh, Pimeroni has tw uh, 12 buttons with a kind of soft touch and comes with uh, firmware that you can program onto the Raspberry Pi Zero that it comes with and turns it into like a launch deck. Uh, you can program any of the 12 keys to do whatever you like. And each one has an RGB LED behind it for animations uh, and colorful displays. It's a no solder kit. And finally, we have the um, GPIO expander bonnet at 16 GPIO. You can do output high or low or input, input with uh, pull-up resistors if you like. Uh, it can run on three or five volt logic and uh, add 16 GPIO and you can even use address pins to connect up to 16, uh, sorry, eight of these onto one Raspberry Pi for a ton of GPIO. And we have Python code with that. Okie dokie. If you want to buy some of that stuff and you want to save some money, and support us. IoT Design Week. 10% off everything That's you just cool. saw. Yeah. Would okay. you like 10% off that Kibo? Let's do a top secret and then we'll uh, do some questions. Okay. All right. From the Adafruit Vault. What you, what you working on? Okay. First top secret thing is this flexible e-ink. Here is a video of it. Weird flex, but okay. Weird flex, but okay. That was going to be the product name, but we're thinking of something nah. else. Flexible e-ink. Do you want me to yeah. show these off on the overhead? Yep. I'll I do. get them ready. This is what it looks like. Uh, and uh, you can ship both of them. Yeah, so there's a small one. And yeah, it's kind of a little translucent. And then you're not supposed to bend these a ton. You're supposed to like, you know, bend them and then I did. set them. But I'm yeah, testing. But you're testing them. You can bend them a lot. Oh, this one's dam delaminating a little bit. That one's damaged because I've just been trying to break it. Yeah. You, you I wanted need. to see. We test but yeah, everything here. You can, it's black and white only, no color, but a uh, nice crisp e-ink display. Yeah. Okay. About like 200 and I think 300 by 100 pixels. This is 200 by 100 or so. All right. Um, next up, this will be a lengthier topic at a, at a future point, but uh, lots of people are saying, let's get kids in the coding. Let's get girls in the coding. Let's get, let's get everyone in the coding. And then when you get them into coding, then eventually you have to say, well, here's this thing called GitHub. And it has this button on it that says blame. And we want you to sit at the desk by yourself all day and stare at this button that says blame, and you're just going to, like, be okay with it. So I think that... And it's never like, <laughs> it's never like GitHub, congratulations, GitHub issues. Well, yeah, issues. Blame and issues. Okay, so basically... Yeah, you got issues, and I'm blaming you. So what has happened is GitHub has turned into a factory for jerks. And I think that if we're going to do things for kids and we're going to bring in people who've never coded, we probably have to change a few things. And it's okay. Like, it was, you know, when you expand something, you have to, like, hey, like, maybe we can do things a little bit better. Um, and so since Microsoft purchased GitHub, they've been doing a ton in education. Today they had um, a women's event for GitHub. They're doing a lot of stuff. So we had an idea, because we do puppet shows, and we do things that teach people stuff, Maybe we can show that, you know, sometimes it's like being a, someone in an orchestra and you're playing an instrument and you're not, you all have to work together. This idea of social coding is really cool, but the social part of it has to come in at some point. So um, we're probably going to do some stuff with uh, this new addition to the, to the family. What she's been hiding there all this time. Yeah, this is Mona the Octocat. And this is a special type of puppet that's a little different than the rest of them. And uh, the way this works is it has a uh, different mechanism for the, the head to go back and forth. Yeah, the head tilts back and forth yeah. using this little tilty. So you can see how the head goes back and forth. And then there's a rod for uh, the leg. Some of the legs come off too, but you can see how this works. 
And then if you want to see how um, Octocat talks, let me go this way here. So you can see how Octocat talks. So nice. Yeah. So you can tilt her. She can tilt her head and point at things. Yeah. This is definitely an advanced puppetry puppet. Yeah. Nice jams of these jewels on the bottom. So maybe we could do some things to bring in a whole bunch of people um, and teach them. You know, it's not just pull requests and code. It's it's uh, how to interact with each other and, and how to get the best work from each other. And, and, and how to collaborate. And how to collaborate and be good because I think that's just, a, that's just as important as the latest framework. Yeah. And that's one of the things that... Code. I've definitely built. I've definitely used different frameworks because I'm like, this is a community that I want to be a part of. Yeah. It's not only about technical skill; it's about what what the future holds. So coming soon. And that is uh, our top secret. Back in the vault. Back in the vault with your moon. I mean, she she's not back in the vault. She's hanging out here. She's right over there. She's right over okay, there. Okay. Um, there's some questions I loaded up before, but if you want to ask your questions, go to adafruit.it slash discord. And um, I'd love to answer them. Yeah. Okay. Hit uh, me. Chris says I'm working on a NeoPixel project that currently has two NeoPixel strips, each running on individual boards. What would I? What I'd like to do is sync both strips so the light show begins at the same time. I was thinking I can use RF, but that I never worked with that. I've not been able to find an example. Any suggestions or hardware or coding? You know, actually, the easiest thing might be to use one of our simple RF boards. There's a button and two receivers, and they'll both activate at the same time. So you just have one button and have the two receivers connect the GPIO pin to the microcontroller, and they just wait for that pin, and then they'll sync up together. That's the easiest way by far. Okay. No, no Bluetooth, no RFM. That's, that'll work quite well. Okay. Uh, Bill had a question about the Kibo. Um, can you replace the keys? Also, does it act as an HID keyboard for another PC or send Bluetooth commands and Wi-Fi? I, I think it, I know for sure it does HID, but I don't know if it does, has any sort of way to do Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I think you could do Bluetooth or Wi-Fi if you were running it from within um, 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 like Python on Raspberry Pi, but using the operating system, I think it's just HID. But you can replace the keypads. I think I removed one so you can see the that process. Okay. But for Bluetooth and, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, I think it's a little bit more advanced. It's like a, a keyboard device. On the GPIO expander, um, if you can't do PWM, can you do NeoPixels? Um, no, because it's not going to be fast enough because it's going through I squared C. It's meant for just plain LED on off um, or just signals or switches, um, that kind of stuff. So like, you know, plain pin high, pin low type things. Okay. Uh, what is a good way to solder a board that won't fit on a breadboard? I thought about holding the header pins with silly putty. Does anyone have any suggestions? Someone said Kapton tape in the chat. You can, but you know nothing. It, it's it's these days it's so cheap to get a circuit board. It might be better just to get an adapter board if you can, or make a board and send it uh, to Oshpark. Okay. Um, some kudos. Love that it supports a five volt and three point three volt on that and. So would those 5-volt GPIOs work with data on the NeoPixel and dot stars? You wouldn't be able to do NeoPixels because, again, it's not fast enough because you're going through I squared C. You might be able to do dot stars, but you'd be disappointed, I think, in the speed. Um, it's not going to be very fast. So I think, you, you know, with 5 volts, I think it's better for, there's some chips and sensors out there that just, you know, you want to have um, higher speed, uh, so higher voltages. Like, I'm thinking of LCDs in particular, I know. Um, you know, we use, we've used the MCP series for expanders for LCDs because they want to have um, uh, the higher voltage. They like it, especially if you're uh, reading, writing data to them. Okay. Um, Maker Melissa wanted to know, what's that board in um, some of the builds called, um, let's see, what is it? I think it was, it was a uh, Pi, Pi badge. It's not out yet. Not out yet. But, but, but Maker Melissa, you'll probably get one because you're working on a lot of cool stuff. Um, next up, uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, I think that is. Oh, what did the, where did the Adafruit logo come from? Well, you you start you had a logo, and it was a star fruit, and it wasn't so great. And then I had you, uh, you help told, me. You told I me said, to make a logo for you. You made a logo. So Lady you told me. Bruce. She said what what she wanted, and I said okay. And then I did a version of the logo, and then I worked with a designer, Bruce, who's been with us from almost the start of Adafruit, and then Bruce helped me on it. So it's, it evolved over time. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, next up. How large of a JSON file can the Pi Portal handle? It can definitely handle at least um, 30 kilobytes because that's how much GitHub data, sorry, uh, yeah, GitHub data you get, you get when you query for their, um, the CircuitPython status. It's like 34 kilobytes. Um, if you have very large data, um, I mean, it kind of depends on how you're reading it. For some data, you know, another thing you can do is you can write it to the SD card and then parse through that if you don't need to read it all at once. Um, so for the example, if you look at the JPEG examples where it displays an image, you can't buffer a full image in memory. It's, it's all the memory. So what you do is you read it in four, by, four kilobyte chunks, save it to the SD card or QSPY, and then you can display from that. So there's, there's two different ways to handle very large data sets. Any plans working a guide for using REST API with Pi Portal to pull more advanced feeds like Twitter? Twitter is a, a really complicated because it requires OAuth. Basically anything that requires you to have a web server, we haven't had a demo for. For those, I think you would use something like If This and That or Zapier as an intermediary to get data because you're not going to be able to, you know, you're not going to have a web server that you then have people use their shorter authentication login. It's a, it, basically, if you don't have a web browser, it's just not designed for it. Okay. And Twitter doesn't, they've, they've very, made it very clear that they don't want standalone devices that talk to Twitter. Um, and then would a microphone breakout work with the Pi Portal to create a voice over IP circuit Python phone? You could. Um, you might have something later that does that. Yeah, for that, you know, you, you could definitely have analog input coming into the, the Stemma connectors. You would have to get the audio fast enough and then send it. I mean, you could do it. It'd just be like a buffering party because you'd have to like, read data and then you know keep reading that continuously and then send the data over wi-fi without dropping the audio data so it would not be real time probably okay um how do you get data to from the sd card on the pipe portal um you take the sd card out and you put it in your computer that's the easiest way to i get. think that's what the question means. yeah yeah next up um they want to use a sound effects board to play sounds through an Xbox One headset while playing the game. I have a TRRS cable coming out of the Xbox controller and going into my project box where I will merge the audio from the controller with the sound board, uh, with that sound effects board back to the TRSS jack where I will plug in the headphones. I found the circuit. Will this work? I shouldn't need an amp on the sound effects board since I'm using headphones, correct? Um, you'll want to see if there's other people who've done similar projects. I don't know what the headset is expecting, but for the most part, it's it's DC coupled audio, so you should, it's just audio output. So any project that has audio that's merged into the headset, just you can use the same design. And then, uh, this is what I actually thought the question was. Um, from the code, like how would you get stuff to and from the oh. SD card? We have a guide on how to rewrite data from the SD card. Okay. You just you just mount it as a rewritable file system on slash SD, and then you can read and write to it. It's like a, it's just like the QSPY, but it's another, drive okay. basically uh those are the questions okay good job all right we're gonna do a trivia question what do you want to give away this week we're gonna give away a kibo kibo that's a that's a good thing it's very fancy well what's, i think anyone can use it what's the uh what's how's this trivia thing work? this trivia thing works by you being the first person to ever win a prize on this trivia contest you can't have won before you have to only mm -hmm. win once for your lifetime and my lifetime the first okay. person to call the phone number when it appears on the screen very shortly you have to decode it into numbers type that into your phone yeah called it up and then uh, it's going to ring twice and I'm going to pick it up I'm going to say ahoy ahoy and then you'll say something like hello and then well, I know you're there and then I'll say congratulations you've won a fabulous prize I'm going to ask you your name where you're calling from and a project you're working on or you want to work on if you're able to do all those you're going to win a Kibo from Pi Moroni's beautiful programmable 12 button keypad that you just need an SD card of some sort which you probably have kicking around your house and then yeah. Follow the instructions and you'll be no one call, one call. you'll be rocking out. So I'll put this underneath here so you can see it. That's the phone number. You have to figure it out. You have to figure it out you using math. Out. You'll win this. This is the thing you're winning. And this is the thing that's ringing. Winning, ringing. Winning. Ringing, winning. They work together. Oh, it's ringing. But it has to ring twice. That's right. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna pick it up. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello. Hello, congratulations, you've won a Kibo. Cool. Okay, awesome. pl please turn off your computer audio. Yep. Okay, great. 
That's that's good. All right. So, what's your name and where you're calling from? Uh, Ron, uh, calling from Little Rock, Indiana. Sorry, from... you had my little uh, bipodal IBM center thing on there. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> Ron. Well, you're you're a double winner. So you're you're from where, Indiana? Uh, Monroe, Louisiana. Louisiana. Sorry, I didn't hear the. Yep. I didn't catch that. Okay, Ron from Louisiana. Well, congratulations. Um, you've won a Pimerone Kibo, which I'm sure will come in super handy for you. You can hack that and make all sorts of cool stuff. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at adafruit.com, and say, hey, it's Ron from Louisiana, and I've won a product number 4144. 4144? Four, 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 four. That's right. It's a lot of fours, but I think you can handle it. Um, so what's a product you're working on or you want to work on? Well, uh, like I said, I've been playing around with the high portal and mm. doing different things. So I was hoping to be able to, you know, pull in some more advanced feeds and stuff. But uh, but uh, I may have to look around at maybe doing like a serverless function or something that I can pull data and then I can make a more simplistic API. Yeah. I can uh, call so, it so. Some APIs are great. Some APIs are like you're just you're logging, you're like, everything's on the command and the, you know, the URL, and then you get the dates of JSON. It's beautiful, it's perfect. And sometimes it's like, oh boy, you know, like I was looking at the MTA, like JSON, whatever. Like I was looking up if there's a JSON API for the the train system, and it's totally like the, the worst thing in the world. It's just horrible and to totally impossible to use. So it's like that's how it is sometimes. But you know, you can. Use um, maybe you can use this Kibo Raspberry Pi, and you can have that be the little transformer to get the data and make it into a good format. Yeah, I actually got a I got a Pi with a four inch uh, touchscreen. Mm. Yeah. On it, and so uh, I could actually uh, use that as my server as well. Mm. So. Working together. All right. Well, these sound like great projects, Ron. I can't wait to see them. Come by and show and tell. We'd love to check them out there. I think people would love to get a tour of something else you're working on. Don't forget to email support at Adafruit to get your free goodies. And thank you for calling. Have a lovely night. All right, thanks. Good night. You okay. too. All right. Well, Done. That was it. Stuff given. Hey, everybody. That's our show for tonight. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, don't forget the code is IoT Design Week. Don't forget next week you could win a Pi Portal. Microchip. They make the chip that's on the Pi portal. That's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's an Internet of Things device. Um, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks so much for all the folks in the community. Everyone's helping out in Discord. Uh, let's see who is over here. Thank you, Jesse May, who's in our oh, Adafruit, thanks, Jesse May. Adafruit Slack. Um, all of the Adafruit team members here, all the remote team members. And uh, thank you, everybody, for making this uh fun show. We'll do this every week. And uh, that's it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Here is your moment of Zener. Bye.